No matter who you are, no matter what you believe, there is one universal truth. Weird airplanes are awesome. As part of his regular YouTube diet, Mike looks for content about any unusual or otherwise outlandish yet functional aircraft. Tubes with wings are for noobs. At the same time, he was contemplating an issue he had run into repeatedly with his phone board builds. He saw that larger wings were hard to keep sturdy without adding a lot of extra weight. But one day, he saw something crazy. The A20, oh my god. Grab and hold the send apparatus, activate. Mike ended up doing a bunch of research on the plane, its designer, and how it was able to fly. It's all very cool and deserves a more serious voice, so we brought in this nerd to read it. The AS-20 was designed by the French engineer André Stark in 1938, with a maiden flight occurring in 1942 under Nazi occupation. The craft had their insignia painted on the tail, but there's no indication that Stark himself was a Nazi as he wasn't employed by NASA after the war. After World War II, he went on to design the Starkey AS-22 sport plane and later the AS-37 kit plane. They both used iterations of his approach to the tandem wing layout, also called a Nenadovich wing, after Miroslav Nenadovich, who experimented with the wing configuration. The tandem wing approach he took has a similar result as wing slats, where air is forced along the top of the back wing from the bottom of the front wing using the Venturi effect. This works to maintain laminar flow and allowing for higher angles of attack before stalling. Additionally, the wings have different angles from each other, the front being closer to zero degrees, with the back bottom wing at a higher angle. Stark's designs appear to have the bottom wing at a six degree angle from the top wing. The top wing was one cord's worth ahead of the bottom wing and one cord's worth above. With this layout, each wing is able to be significantly shorter than a standard wing configuration. For example, the AS-37 was 19 feet 8 inches, 6.0 meters long, with a wingspan of 20 feet 8 inches, 6.3 meters. Its cruising speed was 92 knots, 110 miles per hour, 170 kilometers per hour, on a 65 horsepower power plant. By comparison, a Cessna 172 has a wingspan of 36 feet 1 inch, 11 meters, and a length of 27 feet 2 inches, 8.28 meters, with a cruising speed of 122 knots, 140 miles per hour, 226 kilometers per hour, on a 160 horsepower power plant. I just said a lot of airplane words and I probably got something wrong, but hopefully you get the point. Short wings, mad lift, Thanks, dork. But anyway, that was the idea. Mike started by building out the S-20 and fly out and playing around with it to try to see it in action. I don't know if fly out is advanced enough to simulate the Venturi effect, but the results were promising either way. After that, he started messing around with his own UAV design using the same concepts. After several ideations, he ended up with a version he felt was worth bringing into the real world. He took the design, fleshed out plans in Blender, then built it for Arilla. This whole concept is a bit advanced so he was immediately out of his depth. He wasted most of the summer throwing cardboard at the ground. Yikes. After a while, he realized he had a combination of torque roll issues from the motor and weight issues from the kind of foam board he was using. At the same time, he was messing around with another design in Flyout. He decided to build out this other version, a little smaller and with lighter foam board. And a six degree angle of attack there, pretty much zero there. It's a little bent, I threw it. Got ailerons on the tips. I was having the ailerons on the back bottom wing in fly out, uh, but after messing with some variations, I found this was a lot easier to control. This did all right, but this did like a lot of a lot of control. I. Threw this at the yard, at the grass, and 
it went well. Like I, I was putting these tiny wings on, I was like, Ew. but uh, yeah, it behaved the way I wanted to. Um, I've got the center of gravity pretty much. It's got to be in between the wings. And the center of lift with this is about here somewhere. I'll give it a try. I'm optimistic. It's smaller scale than the last one, so I'm hoping that equals more lift. I feel like this will probably be super fast, but uh, capable of slow speeds. And yeah. Well, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty stoked about this one. He threw that version at the ground over the course of a month until he identified some design flaws. He also got a 2000 for 30,000 KV motor instead of the 2205 monster motor he had been using. Homie was nervous, but all the math said it should work. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Airplane. Watch him as he goes. Hell yeah. Day. He was just set up for line of sight, but he got to look like the coolest idiot standing on a football field with a phone strapped to the front of his head. Beautiful. Aviation breakthroughs do be like that sometimes. Alright. Just finished a FPV flight. We've got some changes since the last good flight. Got a little bit bigger ailerons. Um, previous were about a centimeter shorter and this makes a difference I'm able to flip with this now the other one it wouldn't quite do the trick I had to rework the bottom wing so I added a carbon spar there so that's a lot straighter and a lot more solid um, but yeah otherwise this is pretty sweet running a 850 milliamp battery if I push it hard then I get about five minutes if I'm cruising I get up 11 to 15 minutes it's a matter of going full throttle or a third throttle really so there's a lot of variation in in the speed it runs pretty well so yeah we'll definitely definitely see more of this thing and there it is, Mike's latest flight obsession. Like and subscribe to 835 FPV to follow along and keep up on that hip-hop drone nerd action. Peace. <laughs>